I thought it's our bar. <clears throat> Praise the Lord, family. What a blessing to be alive today. What a beautiful day the Lord is giving you and I. I'm so excited because of what God is getting ready to do in this season. It is your season. It is my season. It is a season of the body of Christ, and we got to be ready for what God is preparing for us, his people. Bible says it's only a shameful son that will go to sleep in a season of harvest. It means that when God declares the season of harvest, you must be in position. I got to be in position. The entire body of Christ got to be in position. We got to be ready. The most terrible thing a man could ever be confronted with is for a door to be open and for that man not to be ready. There's been so many visitation of the move of God with unprepared people. But I want to believe this season, God is equipping us and preparing us through the teaching of his word so that we can have an encounter where preparation meets provision. Hallelujah. This season is so we become prepared to receive the provision of God. Listen, when preparation meets provision, there is one thing that happens, manifestation of the promised word of God. And that is the season you and I have come into. And so I welcome you this afternoon as we journey into this season of teaching that we call Genesis of Debt. I want to believe this teaching has been a blessing to you. It's been a blessing to me. And I believe God is using this teaching to equip us effectively. Listen, if you have any question, don't hesitate. I want you to type your questions in the comment box. And like I've always said, I will come back at the end of this live broadcast and answer your questions. Listen, if your question is private, you don't want to put it out there, send me an email to our page. Send a message to the Love Legacy Chapel International email box, and I will take time off to answer your question. Well, today I want to deal with one more point on the list of the genesis of debt, why we find ourselves in debt. And I want to talk about instant gratification. We live in a world today where, you know, fast is not fast enough. You know, uh, you will put a foot, your foot in a microwave and you see folks standing by the microwave. Although they put in three minutes to warm the food, after 30 seconds, they take the food out and check whether the food is warm. And they're so hungry, they, they, the microwave is not fast enough. They want it instant. I believe one day down the road, we're going to have an instant microwave where you put a food in, you press a knob, and instantly the food is warm. But until that time, we need more of patience. It's a virtue of the Holy Spirit. A good number of us today are in all kinds of craziness in our finances and in our debt is because we are not able to exercise restraint. We cannot exercise patience that can only truly come from the Holy Spirit. But I want to believe just as the Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 22 and verse number 3, Bible says, a prudent man sees evil coming. A prudent man foresees evil and hides himself. Bible says, but the simple also sees the same situation, but he keeps on going. And because he doesn't take precautionary measures, Bible says the simple man ends up being punished. And a good number of the children of God today are being punished financially with debt because they didn't foresee the evil days coming. So they fell for every form of instant gratification. But today, I want to bring your attention to the four phases of life. There is the morning of your life. And when I talk about the morning of your life, I'm talking about when you are born up until the age of 25. And this is the time of learning. This is the time you go to school. This is the time you acquire this set of skills that you need for your calling. It is the time to get certificates. It is the time to get licenses. It's the time to find your career path. And of course, there is the good afternoon of your life. And that is from the age of 25 all the way to 25. That is where you begin to lay foundations financially. You begin to work. You begin to find your, your, your place in life. That is the time you marry. That is the time you begin to have children. That is the time you buy homes. That is the time you begin to acquire certain basic things in life. And I will tell you why it might be a dangerous time to buy a home, 
especially in America, after the good afternoon of your life. Because the question then is, are you going to be using your retirement to continue to pay your mortgage? It's crucial to take decisions at the right time. Of course, there is the good evening of your life. That is the age of 50 all the way through to 75. The good evening of your life is the time of investment uh, 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 beginning to work for you. Whatever you did from age 25 to 50 must begin to work for you and not you working to now save for retirement. By the age of 50, you, you should be packaging your legacies. You, you should be able to have investments that are working for you. You should be preparing for retirement. That is where retirement must happen between the age of 50 and 75. It will be a sad thing to be working aggressively at the age of 68, at the age of 70, because you didn't lay the right foundation. It, it must be the time you prepare to uh, even plan to hand over certain things to the next generation. And then, of course, we have the uh, good night of our life where you are signing off the age of 75 to 100. If the Lord blesses you to go past that, that is the good night of your life. And that is the time you say goodbye and begin to hand over. And that is why we need to begin looking at some of these things so that we can lay the right foundation. You know, anytime you talk about instant gratification, for, for those of us that are spiritual people and, you know, uh, believers, what you mostly hear is people saying that I do get tempted. There is a scripture in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Bible says that no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. Whatever tempted you for which you fell for it and instantly got what you got where, which you were not supposed to get at that time, please understand it's a common temptation. You are not the only one that have been in that position. You are not the only one that passed by that dealership and saw that car and felt tempted to stop it there and the salesman was so good, he tempted you and you signed off on that car and drove home with that car. With those statements he made to you, you could be driving this car home today. Bible says that temptation is common to man. Everybody goes through the same temptation we go through. But the question is, how come others are able to overcome those temptations and we consistently fall for it? Bible says that God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. It means there is an ability in you to overcome that uh, instant desire, the desire to gratify your needs and your, 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 your pleasures within you. There is always that human tendency in us to want to satisfy our craving. But God has also put in you a mechanism to ward off, to fight off, and to have victory over those feelings that are going on within you. I love what the book of Galatians 5 verse 16 says as well. It says, but I say to you, walk by the Spirit so that you will not gratify. We're talking about instant gratification. It says, walk by the Spirit so that you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. The desires of the flesh is what brings us into debt. Here you are signing off on a car with high interest. And by the way, one thing we need to know, if you're a young adult, I need you to listen to me carefully because you guys are prone to instant gratification more than the older folks. Young adults, those in their uh, 20s, early 30s, you know, the more we experience life, the more we become patient in picking up on things. But young folks, young adults are more challenged when it comes to instant gratification. They know very well they are in school. They got to focus on their homework. A friend comes around and says, you know, three of our friends are coming. We're going out to have a good time today. They will abandon the homework and they will jump on the bandwagon just to keep up with the Jones. And then they, off they go. They forget their homework is supposed to be submitted 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And then by the time they come home, it's 1130. The reason why they are trailing in that course because of instant gratification. An offer came and instantly they jump on a bandwagon and here they go. It's the same with you young folks that are working. You know Wednesday is right in the middle of the week. What business do you have there staying out late, just hanging out with friends till 1 a.m.? And then you come 5 o'clock, you got to get up, and then you are so cranky on the job in the morning because you didn't have a good night's sleep. Instant gratification has a way of robbing so many things from us. And that is what we are talking about this afternoon. Bible says, if we walk by the Spirit, we will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Hallelujah. 
Now, you know very well, you live in a city where there is public transport. You don't need a car. But because of the need to satisfy your ego, you want to sign off on a car with a high interest because you don't have enough down payment and you don't have good credit. Whereas you could have given yourself a year or two to build your credit and build a good down payment so you save yourself from paying more in terms of your monthly payment and paying a higher interest. But because of the need to satisfy yourself instantly, you quickly jump on and you sign up for a car that you are not ready for. It is instant gratification. A good number of the younger folks do not know how to delay gratification. They want it and they want it now. Now we can do this by examining a few things. I want you to begin to empathize with your future self. Empathize with that. How does the future look for me with all these crazy things I'm picking up? A car here, a TV set here, a home theater here. I'm buying on. Empathize with yourself. How is my financial future going to look like if I keep buying all these things? You're buying a cell phone for $1,500 and you're not using that cell phone for any business activity. You buy sneakers for $500, $350 for sneakers. Please understand it this way. Anytime you go to that store and you see that sneaker for $350, translate that to your working hours. And tell yourself, this is one week salary hanging on the shelf. And I'm not, not going to trade my one week paycheck for something I'm going to be working on in the dirt. Empathize with your future self. And that will redeem you from instant gratification. Because for the most time, most, most part, we, we are self-focused on the now rather than the future. If you can look into the future and empathize with the stress of mounting debt, it will redeem you. And one of the things you could do to also save yourself from instant gratification is to preset standards. Preset standard. As I begin this new job, what are the standards? Even in our marriage as a couple, preset standard. We're not going to spend more than X amount on this type of stuff. We're not going to spend this X amount on shoes. I'm never going to buy with this kind of salary. Anytime I need a shoe, I must make sure the shoe I buy is within the $80 range. I'm not going to go crazy and buy a three. So once you have those preset standards, when you see something that tempts you so much, you want to grab it and you have your standard, you will look at it in the face of your standard and say, you know what, this is way out of my standard. I'm not going there. It's a non-starter. When you have preset standard. Well, I want to take my girlfriend out for dinner and you have a pre-standard uh, on, on how much you will spend and you have a standard that, you know what, I will not take my girl out more than once a month and on holidays and maybe on her birthday or on Valentine or whatever. Preset standard. Listen, if you don't have standard, anything becomes a standard. Preset standards. And that is the reason why we haven't set boundaries. That is the reason why, because there are no boundaries around us, listen, anything comes in and out. Have preset standard, have a, a way of pre, uh, I mean, empathizing with your future self. All these things are ways that will get you out of trouble. Hallelujah. And also, a good number of us have visions, but we got to break the visions into goals because the vision could be big. I want to save 20,000, but how do you plan to get it? Break it down into goals. Well, 20000 I want to be able to put together in a year, but I want to make sure that every month I'm saving 1500 You've broken that big vision into goals. Well, I owe 10000 I want to make sure I pay the 10000 by the end of the year, but break it down into goals. I want to make sure that every month I pay off $800 of my debt. Now, that big vision is broken down into goals. If you can do some of these things, you are on track to defeating debt right in the face. And so this afternoon, we're going to pray as always. If you did receive the word of God, God wants you to overcome instant gratification. And you can do that by empathizing with your self future. You can do that by setting standards ahead of events. Preset standards. And you can do that when you break your visions into goals.
God wants you to defeat instant gratification. Don't fall for it. I want you to pray with me. And your prayer is very simple. Lord, kill this appetite. And some of us naturally, we are very spontaneous. We are quick to jump into things. But you want to pray and say, Lord, I want to be led by your spirit. If you understand that your finances is from God, you understand, therefore, that every financial de decision you make is a spiritual decision, although it looks physical, because your finance is from God. Lord, we pray this afternoon that we will be led by your spirit so that we do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For Lord, through your teaching today unto us, we have fallen victims to instant gratification because we fulfill the desires of the flesh. And Lord, today your word has taught us that the flesh is an enmity to the spirit. But Lord, we want to be men and women, children of God who are of the spirit, who will not... Uh, fulfill the desires of the flesh. And so, Lord, let your spirit empower us this afternoon that we may be able to live in a spirit, walk in a spirit, make decisions out of the spirit that we may not fall to the desires of the flesh that consistently bring us into lack, bring, brings us consistently into poverty, and brings us consistently into financial frustration. Lord, deliver us this afternoon in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, set us, your people, free from the curse and the bondage of instant uh, satisfaction of the flesh as against the leading of the spirit. And Lord, today we are open. Let your spirit lead us. We submit our desires to the spirit of God. And Lord, even as we do so, may we begin to experience a mighty deliverance of the spirit of God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray this afternoon. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen, child of God, I want you to examine yourself. Paul said, daily, I examine myself. Examine yourself. Consider your weaknesses. What are the things you just can't walk away from? And sometimes, just like uh, sexual weaknesses, Bible gives one antidote. Bible doesn't say pray against it. Bible says flee fornication. If you know your weakness is shopping, what business do you have going to the mall every other day? You are just making yourself available for your weaknesses. You must purposefully walk away from the places that take away your money and go there when you truly need something. And listen, as you pray, the grace of God is going to come upon you mightily. And the Lord is going to set you free by your choices. Listen, I want you to share our pages. If you have questions, please post them in the comment box. And right after this live broadcast, I'm going to come back and answer your questions. I want you to know I truly love you and I'm praying for you. So pray for me. And I look forward to connecting with you tomorrow right here, same time at 12 o'clock for our midday connection. God bless you. Grace and peace to you. Shalom.